What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Power Rankings, guys. We are here power ranking anything and everything Survivor Michigan. Uh, I'm Paul. As always, I'm here with Joe. Hi, everybody. Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. To quote Dylan, that was something. Oh, my gosh. I'm still processing it almost a week later. Still in recovery. Uh, yeah. Speechless. Jaw on the floor. Wow. <sighs> wow. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm exhausted from that episode. Um, everything is... Yeah, I still have I still have so many unresolved issues. I still have so many <laughs> unanswered questions. I I have come fully around the bend. I've done a full 180 on this episode to go from my initial reaction, which was fury, which uh, some of you may have gotten to see. We we were on the after show this week, which was super yeah, exciting. Was so um, and so you got to see my reaction, which was pure, pure fury. And now I've gone a full 180. And I have a whole theory about why this episode is genius Ooh, good. that we will be discussing at the end of this episode. So you come around. I mean, I, I said it on the live show. Like, I think for me, it was a little bit of a selfish reason, but I just felt like there was so much going on. And a knowing that Paul and I were going to have to then jump on a, a live and talk about it, like with no time, like when we do these, we try to record them earlier if we can, but like, you know, we, I feel like we've been recording on Tuesdays mostly and, yeah. you know, you get that whole week to like marinate on it and think about it. And I was just so overwhelmed with how much was going on. I was honestly fine with the to be continued. I still am. And I think even beyond the selfish reasons of giving me more time to process things, like, I think it just made sense. I mean, it was almost a two hour episode and I thought it was fine. I was fine with the to be continued. I will stand by that. I said it that night. So I'm glad you're you've made your your way uh, to the to the light I, side. I have, and part of it <laughs> part of it is just the simple fact of there was nothing to cut. Like there's nothing yeah. here to lose, really, mm-hmm. where you don't lose a major part of the story or a major narrative beat. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing that started to bring me around is just that there's everything here is good. Like yeah. I wouldn't want anything here to be cut. It's exceptional. But then I have another theory that I'll get into later. But yes, I did come around to your way of thinking (laughs) after, um, yeah, after quite a fiery after show appearance, (laughs) which is fun. Um, So (laughs) we open this episode, episode Operation Forced Hibernation. Okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We open it with sometimes these episode titles. I'm like, yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> okay yeah. and this was this was the latter not the former mm-hmm. um so we open this with leia jesse bailey and emily b mm-hmm. and this girls alliance talking about bringing brie in um potentially to have a five and now like we would call this a women's alliance but not all the women are included wait so brie was already in it we, we, yes they were talking because okay. it was the four of them kind of on that tribe together and then talking about Bri- bringing Brie in from the other tribe back oh, okay. when they were in those original two tribes gotcha, split. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So the five of them, um, obviously Lucy and Megan are not on that list. Mm-hmm. They are excluded from that, which right. I think is always risky when your women's alliance is your sum of the women's alliance. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. just currently rewatching Big Brother Canada season two. And a very similar dynamic happens where like a lot of the women get together, but then they're like, not these two. (laughs) And inevitably it's the two that they were leaving out that end up doing quite well in the game. Mm -hmm. And it's, I just, cause I love these and I would love to see this Alliance succeed, but I don't know how, how can you pull it off without Megan and Lucy? Yeah. I don't know. It is an interesting choice. I think, um, I mean, Megan already has this sort of like target ish on her. So I kind of understand that. And again, I think like with Megan, especially now knowing that she's dating Jackson and all that, like she is going to tell him everything. So I think in a weird way, like, yes, it would be great to include Megan and Lucy, but I think leaving out Megan makes sense because Megan will inevitably tell Jackson. Um, And then Lucy, I don't know. I guess like they're just scared of her being so close to Sam. So I think it's, it's the same thing we talked about that. with Megan is they're they're afraid of her telling Sam and Adam, which right. valid. Yeah. yeah. 
It just makes me nervous. Um, they, they do have Bailey in there, so they got to be careful. So exactly. So what's the difference? Everybody's <laughs> gonna know anyway. Um, Megan talks about Jackson playing the idol at Tribal Council, and she says she's mad that Jackson played her idol. <laughs> which oh, this is so good. Yeah, this is I. Uh, and and Megan <laughs> saying that like uh, if Jackson had gone home, whatever, I'd rather have the idol in the game than Jackson. Right. She's so stone cold. I know. This is like when married couples are together for a long time and they start to look like each other. I think <laughs> what's happening with Jackson and Megan is like they've been together long enough that they're starting to play Survivor like each other. Yeah. I. It was great. It's almost like a what's what's yours is mine situation, but it's like yeah. no, that's actually mine. Yeah, what's Megan mine is mine saying. too. What's Absolutely. Mine, right. <laughs> She's so good. Um, I love Megan. So it's all Kevin's fault. I just have that note because I think we get a montage of people saying it's Kevin's fault, which is so fun. Kevin is so fun this season. Oh and like, gosh. if we really are going into a merge potentially out of this tribal council, Kevin is not in the worst place being kind yeah. of that. We can always get him next time. Kind of guy. Mm. This is, I know I'm, yeah. I'm a certified Kevin defender, but this is not bad. And I, and and I like it. Those people, at a lot of the times, go really far. If you know, if if they, if it's like the, it's almost like the obvious vote in a way. But it's mm -hmm. like, if you become too obvious and then play into that and skate by a couple votes, could sometimes be they go all the way. Toward, yeah, towards the end, who knows? Why not? I hope so. Um, I have another note about where Kevin is talking about if you tell people um, something, it gets around really fast. And I said no. That's just because you're telling everything to Bailey. And right. if telling Bailey makes everything get around really <laughs> fast, which is, I feel like I'm sort of the person like ringing that bell all the time of like, but I'm just going to keep ringing it because we just keep, we keep getting story beats about it every single episode about mm -hmm. that. Bailey just tells everybody everything. Is this a valid survivor strategy of just kind of being open with everybody and saying what you know? I don't think so. Okay. I think. I think it's, and we see this, and I'm sure we'll talk about it later in the episode. Like we see a couple people do this similar move where they <laughs> like feel bad or, you know, they put their friendship above the game and they're like, I just, I can't not tell this person. Um, so it's just interesting seeing that play out again, like college survivor is so different. It's, I mean, a this is a returning season. So we know people have relationships and connections and <laughs> also it's a, like a hundred day game. So there's a lot of time here. So but yeah, I mean, I think in a way it's like partially good depending on the situation because like you're telling your ally, well, if they are your ally, things. True. But if that keeps happening as the game progresses, it's going to get back to people that you're the one leaking things and then it's not going to be good for you because it'll put a target on you. So I feel like that already starts some in this episode where we start yeah. to hear Bailey's name being brought up as somebody mm -hmm. who's talking to everybody about right. everybody. Right. And I think that's, you're right. That's where the danger comes in. It's not mm -hmm. in the telling people it's in the people finding out that you're telling people. Right. Right. Um, we get a little bit of a postmortem on Aaron here. Um, Aaron got voted out. Uh, Adam is sad. Jackson and Sarah are not. Um, and it just kind of is a like, at one point I just wrote like we put Aaron out of her suffering because I'm just like they're like that end of that episode was just so agonizing and just yeah. so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like just like this old yeller like where Aaron was in a bad spot. She was in a bad spot for a while and she was just hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. And then eventually like she goes and it's this really brutal like ending and it's very personal because I mean, and in a way, I get that. Like, you can yeah. say you're a gamer all you want Ooh. and, like, whatever. But, like, especially in an all-star season, like, it's, like, there are personal feelings involved. Yeah, and it's absolutely. hard not to feel personal about it. I'm sure that Aaron has moved past this. I'm sure, sure. that Aaron's feelings in the moment are not indicative of her feelings currently. Right. But it's emotional, mm -hmm. definitely. And I think it's important to note that, like, yes, this is, like, with Will going and with Aaron going, like these are two big emotional moments, but like everybody left at this point is going to kind of have an emotional exit because yeah. everybody is tied to people 
everybody, everybody is tied to people. That's a great sentence, honestly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a professional writer right there for you. But everybody in this game has ties. Yes. And they're personal ties, not mm -hmm. just strategic ties. And so you can't lose a person at this point without losing somebody who has those ties and who felt like a lot of people in this game feel like they're in good spots. Yeah. And I think, I think Cooper said it best at one point, like I forget which part, cause I know this episode had a lot of parts, but I think it was towards the beginning, like there's going to be more tears to come. And I think that was definitely like a big foreshadowing shadowing of the season because yeah, you're right. Like the connections are strong. These people have been friends or have known each other for years. Like, it's it's not always easy voting out a friend. So I think, yeah, it's going to get tougher as the season goes on. And I yeah, I don't think we've seen the last of, of an emotional tribal. Totally agree. Uh, fall break is here. Woohoo. Um, <laughs> never think of fall break without thinking of the Alex's going canoeing together right. when they were still trying to <laughs> pretend that they didn't know each other. Like, oh my God. I, I, we, we will ne there will never be enough Alex's content for no. me ever we could really we could listen to like the un like the unedited just alex's footage could be released and yes. i would watch it like the director's cut of a film <laughs> but you know how people watch those like 37 hour lord of the rings cuts mm -hmm. i would yeah. watch that but it's just season one of survivor michigan with unedited alex footage <laughs> just a hundred percent um we get ma'am's hit list here which yes. is how it is uh written out which ends up getting very long yeah it started out with a couple names and then by the end of the segment, I think like half the cast was on there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm kind of like, I get it, Sam, but also like focus up here. Like right, I need right. you to like hone this in. Sam's hit list is basically just, he's still mad at Megan Jackson and Kevin. Um, yeah, yeah. Is this, is Sam being myopic here? Like I can't help but feel like, are there bigger fish for Sam to be frying at this point? Shouldn't he be? Shouldn't he be noticing this girls alliance? Shouldn't he be pe like paying attention to that? Shouldn't he be afraid of Nick and Sarah at this point? Like, I'm like seeing Sam's hit list worried me. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I think um, if he stays too laser focused on this Megan Jackson situation, you're right. I think he'll lose sight of the bigger threats that are out there to his game specifically. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he does with that. Um, I think, you know, yeah, we'll just have to see. I mean, you know, when you're on fall break outside of the game a little bit, I'm sure it's just like, I, I don't think I could shut my brain off from the game. Yeah, even like, totally being away from it for a few days. So I think, you know, he's definitely thinking through things. He's got this hit list, but yeah, we'll we'll see what Sam does with that. We'll see if yeah. he loses sight of the of the the end goal with and this I, hit list. In the I actually think what you said actually plays into a lot of the drama this episode, which mm -hmm. is people just were home for fall break and got bored. Mm -hmm. And the insanity that ensues in this episode is like a result of that. Yeah. Cause like I like I know there are a lot of times where like we've been playing live games or like you're in a live game and you're like, oh, if I just had 15 minutes, I could have figured out a better way to play that round or a better yes. way to play that situation. Mm -hmm. This is the opposite of that where now you have weeks right. to ruminate a situation <laughs> and you're just going to overplay, which I think comes to fruition later in this yeah. game. Yeah. Um, Sam does an impression of will that is nothing short of incredible. <laughs> I had to like make so sure good. that they showed his blips moving on screen to make sure it wasn't <laughs> like a will like, like soundbite clip put in there. Yeah. Sam's will is unbelievable so good so good yeah we need more more impressions from mm -hmm. sam yes we please. just like a bonus footage of just sam doing impressions of the whole cast totally on board with that but actually sam's impression doesn't win this episode the winner of this episode is adam's grandma darlene yes uh, what an icon what a legend what a game changer all the things uh, oh, oh. 10 o'clock. That's a sign. Yep. It's a sign. Yeah, it's Adam's grandma. We love you. Thank Darlene. you for thank you for your presence with us, Grandma Darlene. Uh, she's amazing. And and she's iconic. And I like I know not everybody watches like the secret scenes or the extra scenes. Go to the bonus content this week. Adam is home with his grandma and explains to her what's going on, and she clocks the entire game. 
Wow. Like from a total outsider perspective, just sitting in her cozy chair, reads the entire game up and down. Uh, uh, rest in peace. We have to say, yeah, we get it. We get a button for her at the end of the so episode. Sad. So heartbreaking for, so, Oh, there goes the lights again. I don't know I, what's going on in my home right now. Think we have a, we might have a visitor from this is it, it, Grandma Darlene. You know, it's what, what's so funny about that is I said like before the episode was even over. I said we have to get Grandma Darlene on the podcast. Like Aww. we like we have like yeah, it was that... my original priority. So uh, rest in peace to her. But yeah. she is cl- apparently with us this evening. Yeah. So at least in my part, I don't know. If she didn't make her way to Nashville. I know. Um, like I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at my lights behind me, like waiting to see them. I'm waiting for there. something to fall off the wall oh, behind my gosh, you and be you like, imagine? "What's up, Grandma Dar?" Um, she's amazing. So um, so cool. And it's like it's I love just like her and Adam's dynamic too. It's all it's like she's played online games. She's won online games. I'm like this is beyond. And it's like if you've ever played an online game like i can think of a couple like older women mom grandmoms that like have have i've crossed paths with in 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 orgs and like you love to see those kind of people get into that stuff right yes. like i think about my mom she would have no idea what to do so like yeah. i just love that there's this like older woman you know group out there that's like getting into live game or into online games and doing well so that was really cool to see too wow. um and we see where adam gets it I mean, could you be any higher on Adam? Could you love Adam anymore no. if you tried your absolute very hardest? No. I, he's so good. He's so good. I love him with my whole heart. Uh, I mean, absolutely would throw myself on the railroad tracks for Adam. There's no <laughs> doubt. Like, I have not felt this way about a Survivor Michigan character in in a long time. Yeah. Like, even, like, I mean, we love Megan. We love mm-hmm. Camila. Like... Yep. You know, we love Shannon. We love Brit. Uh, um, who am I thinking of in season three? I, I just I said Brittany, but it's not. It's the other white girl with curly black hair. Um, um, Sarah? Um, no, 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 no. From season Mallory? three. Oh, I'm from getting season, No, from season three. She's the original Savu Savu with Austin and oh, Andrew. Oh, Aliza. And Aliza, thank you. Yes. Oh, yes. How can we forget Aliza? I know. Love Aliza. Like, love mm. all these people that were standing. But Adam is like developing a tier of his own yeah like to be with me like yeah he's bringing it in like more ways than we could even consider um i'm sure we will get to the challenge like we will yeah so high on adam so high on adam um leia really wants to hold sam and cooper together because she really Mm. wants to go far with both of them Uh, in theory, I love this. Mm-hmm. Leia is in a good spot in the game. I don't know if Leia is in a good spot in the game for Leia. Because here she's openly saying she doesn't like Survivor because she doesn't like the betrayals. Yeah. And I'm like, like, does she not know what she's playing? I, and she's so good at so much of this game. Mm-hmm. Like she has a skill set that is so built for survivor yeah i i worry this all-stars format is not great for leia at this point if she's openly telling people in confessional like like this is not great and she has yet to vote a she's yet to vote anybody out because the only tribal council she went to was the will tribal where she voted for kevin Mm. so she's yet to vote anybody out of the game let alone a friend right so, like, whereas some of these people have already been through the emotional labor of that mm-hmm. part of the game, Leia hasn't voted anybody out. She hasn't voted any of her friends out and is already saying, I don't like Survivor because I don't like the betrayals and is already sort of feeling this burden. And I just, like, my my note that I wrote down in my personal notes is just, this won't end well. Yeah. Like, I, I don't see a way that this doesn't end horribly for Leia. I know. I think... It's interesting because it's like every every player has like their their flaws, right? So it's yeah. like if she's honing in on this, like I'm I'm not okay with betraying my friends. I want all my friends to the come like to come to the end with me. Like it's just that's not gonna happen. It's not realistic. Yeah. And it's like you're gonna as you move further and further into the game, a you're either gonna lose friends by your own hand or not. I mean, there's a big chance she could lose somebody in this 
double vote that's going to be coming up. Very much. Um, or if you are getting to the end with all of your friends, like you have to vote people out. It's worse. As right. she learned in season one. Yeah. It's worse. And like, I, I, I have long said both on this podcast and off about Survivor that sometimes the things that make you a good person don't necessarily make you a good Survivor player. Yeah, um, It's something that I've said about several people that have come through the Survivor Michigan universe. And I think like these traits in Leia of that she's like a loyal friend and she doesn't like betrayals and doesn't like that and wants all of her friends to get along and work on the same page. These things make her a good person. Like, right. in, in, like in our good traits in every situation except Survivor yeah. where you have to like you have to like not to quote Sarah again, but like WWCD, like what would Cooper do? Like yeah. Cooper, Cooper will backstab Leia mm -hmm. if he needs to at some point. Right. I and don't she's think even mentioned that she said like Cooper will it. do anything. <sighs> so come on, Leia. I know. So you got and, and there have been times this season where we're like, yes. She's overcoming season one, mm -hmm. Leia. She's doing it. She's learned her lesson. And then there are times when it's like, oh, like I see her reverting back. And it's like, yeah. I just wanted to remember the pain of the season one finale. Like, right. that, like it's happened. Now it's aired. You've watched it back. Like, I want you to remember this feeling mm -hmm. and capture that as you go forward. So right. we weren't podcasting season one, which is part of the problem. If we were podcasting <laughs> season one, Leia could listen to Power That's Rankings true. guys and be like, oh, those guys are right. I should have <laughs> done something differently. And, right. but, um, yeah. Um, alas, maybe uh, All Stars 2, mm. we are going to really strongly affect the action of yeah, that's uh, true. Survivor Michigan All Stars 2. <laughs> so, uh, swap. Here we go. I was swap. shocked. Let's go. I was so hyped at this moment. It was crazy. I was like trying to just absorb it. And then I'm like trying to furiously write down like who's on what tribe. Um, yeah, that was crazy. Yes, I have the tribes here. So we end Perfect. up with Bailey, Bree, Cooper, Sarah, and Nick. Then uh, Megan, Kevin, Emily, B, Sam, and Adam. Then Jesse, Jackson, Leia, Lucy, and Andrew. Mm. Now, when it looked like these tribes were going to separate tribes, I was like, Cooper is screwed. Mm -hmm. Like it's absolutely gonna be Cooper. Yeah, I was like, I don't see. I was like, I don't see a way that Cooper and Jackson make it out of either of these tribes. I'm like that middle tribe, that Megan, Kevin, Emily, Sam, Adam tribe. I don't know how that shakes out. Yeah, but I was like, Cooper especially was completely saved by this joint tribal. Now he mm -hmm. might go home anyway, but right. if 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 he was just going to tribal with Bailey, Bree, Sarah, and Nick. There's no way that Nick, Sarah, and Bree don't vote Cooper out here. Right. There's right. no way. Yeah. So, um, but I have to say, if only one of these tribes could be safe, we got the right one to be safe. I know. Um, like, the Survivor Michigan gods were looking down upon us. Yes. Megan, Kevin, Emily, B, Sam, and Adam. Yeah. Like, ooh. <laughs> like, to have all those people guaranteed to go into the next round, whether it's a merge or not, is primo yes. like yes yeah it's sort of like the rock draw in season one where it's like the best possible person <laughs> drew the rock this is like again what happens here in this swap so yeah. uh we get the scavenger hunt oh iconic gosh. survivor michigan challenge it's the reason we're all here yeah. and totally lived up to the hype yeah they 100%. they hundred percent game on that it was so good just the montages like there's so much we could even dissect just from the challenge. And this again goes to like the length of the episode of, I yeah. would not have wanted to lose a single piece of this. No, like it was all like, good. And we have secret scenes coming. That's just more scavenger hunt oh, that I'm wait. ready to sit down with, with a glass of something and just, <laughs> cause it's so fun. And especially yeah. as high stakes as this one became, which obviously we see with some of the stuff that happens mm -hmm. is amazing. Yeah. Um, we, we can't go further though without Jackson calling Jesse a bump on the log and then saying that's an insult to bumps on logs. Oof. 
It's so good. If this That's is like so the great. Cochrane, um, <laughs> she's an insult to the flavor of vanilla because at least people want vanilla. Like this is better than that. Mm. I like I have to say I'm a little bit off the Jackson train because I was watching Ooh. the secret scenes and Jackson is not a Michigan football fan, which uh -oh. I did not know. Oh, it's really a Utah football fan. Okay. Which I feel like is, I remember him see, like seeing him in a hoodie of Utah, but it's fine. I mean, they had a good season this year, I guess, but like come on, man. Yeah, Dang that's, it. that's a choice. I just like I I go into this like assuming that these are all Michigan fans, and then to find <laughs> out one of them is not is like okay. Now I have a reason to like dislike one of them. But um, he <laughs> makes it back because that's a, a brilliant confessional. Uh, yeah. Nate, Nate is here. Nate, yeah, so good. Nate, why aren't you on this cast? No, did he Damn apply? It, Nate. Do we know? I well, let's let's run that one up the flagpole because okay, I want to talk more about Nate. I love Nate. I think yeah. Nate is hilarious. So I'm a theater guy. So like in, in college, like I did a ton of college theater. So I already have like a pre-built in affection for Brie and Nate <laughs> because I just love theater people. Yeah. And like seeing them in this theater class, like is a total throwback. I reposted the meme from me Monday onto my Instagram <laughs> because I'm just like Marie being so excited and Nate being like, oh my God, like so, so like, good. As brief as a Nate appearance. Also, this is Nate's third season of Survivor Michigan because he shows up in season two. And in my rewatch of season two, oh. I noticed that Nate is here. So this is actually Nate's third season on Survivor Michigan, despite uh, only playing once. So maybe we see him again. Do we know what I, year he is? I wouldn't be mad one bit. Oh, I wouldn't either. To see Nate again. We let's call it like Nate winner Nate for of season six. Nate for season six? Hell yeah. I'm in. Um, we get a call back to the fact that Cooper loves Justin Bieber. Um, I asked Ian about this on the after show and he played it coy, but I think he just didn't want to tell the truth, which is that Cooper loves Justin Bieber and is going to work him into Survivor Michigan every chance he gets. <laughs> hey. Um, Dale. Dale. Dales. Dales, plural. <laughs> All the Dales. This man... How has he not been on CBS? I don't yet? know. Who in casting is dropping the ball, not putting this man on CBS? I don't know. They're making I'm a huge mistake with Dale. So I good. love Dale. I like. We interviewed Dale and Ann for the podcast last mm -hmm. year. I could have interviewed Dale and Ann once a week for the rest <laughs> of make the rest of our lives. Like right. just talking to them. So good. They're just deeply interesting people. Mm -hmm. Dale is amazing. Yeah, like such a character, such a multiple characters. He's just so good, and yeah. he's so good here. We get uh, Sarah Avery is here. Uh, Mom, Mom is here. Love her. I, again, I said it last week. I'll say it again. I hope she's well. I hope whatever she's doing in her life, mm -hmm. that she has found joy, happiness, and that she is doing well. Yes. Um, Camila. Camila. We Queen. miss her. Queen. She better come back for another season. Girl, be you better be back on Survivor. She also looks like... She looks like she just stepped out of like a movie or like a fashion shoot. I have to go like, back to our notes on this because we were text we were texting <laughs> each other and sometimes Sam, um, unfortunately, because poor Sam got I think I think Sam got to know the power rankings guys far more than he ever thought he would. <laughs> um, but like literally when Camila comes on screen. Both of us are just like, Camila, oh my God. Yeah. She looked incredible. Stunning. Like Miss Michigan. Yeah. She looked insane. Yeah. Um, we need to see her back. Yes. Uh, Mallory. Mallory, our girl. We love her. Our we pick from we like episode two. <laughs> love her. Um, I'm just trying to like, because we have so many notes for this. I know. Um, Jackson and Megan are adorable they were very cute i'm glad we finally got to see them together me too for once and i'm worried the fact that we got to see them together finally i'm very like oh no like yeah um uh ian getting everyone to clean the house is Masterful. classic ian yeah the, man, the man's a genius Love we've it. said it multiple times before we're gonna keep <laughs> saying it um uh i uh, you texted me in all caps the phrase Homemade needle. <laughs> <laughs> that was, I was like, Lucy, what are you about to do? I, 
I mean, we love the commitment to we the love challenge, the commitment. but oh man. Not using a homemade needle to give yourself a misspelled tattoo. Yeah, right. <laughs> is not the move. That's just like so Lucy though. Like that was just such a good segment. It's very Lucy and I love her. Like I, I feel like she's grown on me so much this season. Yeah, I really like her this season. Keep torture lit. Keep torture lit. Um, so shout out, uh, Devin, Angela, Lavana, um, mm -hmm. uh, tribute to Maggie, um, yep. is so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. We um, had, uh, Brittany, Nick, Brittany, Nick, Borowski. Yeah. Oh, yes. So good uh, Dylan, again. Dylan. So good. Um, <laughs> but this is all leading up to the main event of the scavenger hunt, which of course is King Adam. Yeah. When I saw those two items pop up on the screen, shave your head and get a tattoo, I was like, who? I'm like, somebody is going to do this. Who is it going to be? But our guy, Adam. Who else could it be? Who else could it be? I've said it. Uh, I said it on the recap, but I want to say it again. <laughs> Adam had three haircuts this episode, and they were all fantastic. He literally pulled them all off. If I like, if my if the person who cuts my hair like blinks or sneezes during my haircut, I look like a mess for two weeks. <laughs> Adam had three totally different haircuts this week, and each one better than the last. Right? Because when he went blonde and he had those blonde curls, I was like, "Sir, sir," sir? <laughs> I was like, "What is going on?" And I then know. he shaved his head, and I was like, "Oh no, he shaved off the curls." I was like, "Oh wait, yeah." I was like, "Okay." This we part. might have done something here. Okay. Really? I, I'm i sad we don't get to see Grandma Darlene's reaction to Adam's shave head. Oh, yeah. Which, um, hope maybe at some point that will come across. But right. Adam, uh, at this point, if Adam gets voted out, it will be so oh. gutting to me. Yeah. Because no one has given more to this game thus far than Adam. Yeah. I was just going to say the same thing. I feel like we've said this already. So yes. the fact that like he's still delivering, he's still going all out for this game. Um, yeah. You just like love to see it. You love right? to see it. Like you, this is what we come for. Right. Right. This it's is what all we're stars. here for. It's your second chance. Like bring it. Yes. Leave it all out on the floor, on the table. Yeah. All the hairs. Yes. Get the tattoo. I honestly didn't think the tattoo was that bad. No, I didn't at all. So. And it'll make more sense if he wins this season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> honestly, though, like the thing is, like, when you come to College Survivor and you play like that, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. Obviously, it right, still matters right. whether you win or lose, but like you become an icon yeah. either way. Like, and so to future players who are listening, future Survivor Michigan players, like mm -hmm. if you're, see, if you're playing this season right now, going on winter 2023, go hard. Yeah. Like do it, go right. hard, do whatever you have to do, play as hard as you have to play. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, the result, two weirdos will be talking about <laughs> you in a couple of years and standing you. And yes, yes, wherever we are in our lives right. at that point, we will be standing you. So this is a message to you, future Survivor Michigan players. Yes. <laughs> so we get the announcement that all 10 of these people are going to tribal council together, but it is going to be a double tribal. So the yeah. two people with the highest amount of votes will go home, Whew. which always makes me so nervous. Oh, I no. hate this because... Yeah. There's so much math to be done. Mm -hmm. So we get pretty early on. Sarah tells us that in order to control this vote, you have to have seven people, mm -hmm. which is correct because you can do a 4-3-3 three, three, and then right. on the revote, everybody votes together. It's good. Yeah. The problem is you have to have seven people who are totally locked in right. to one plan. Nobody's moving. Nobody's jumping anywhere because if mm -hmm. one person gets a skew you could not only you could lose both of the votes theoretically because you could force right. three the other way mm -hmm. or some combination of five two five three two or something it's so easy to go home here yeah and it's so easy to go home here with like two votes right y Very you know risky. which is what drives the insanity and paranoia mm -hmm. of the back half of this episode yeah 
which is just, it's nutty. It's so nutty. I mean, yeah, in theory, that that plan makes sense. But like you said, you have to have everybody on board. And especially as we see with as the episode goes on, like certain people can't vote for this person. And then like people want to tell other people about the plans changing and stuff. So it's like, you know that this is just going to be messy. Like there's seven people in this game are not going to be on the same page. Never, never. And, and so we, we see a scene of professor Nick explaining this to Bailey, <laughs> which is so funny. <laughs> and, and Bailey, again, she has so many good reads on the game. She just has this one flaw yeah. that we keep harping on, which is probably, mm -hmm. we're probably harping on it too much, but like it's, it's because she is good at the game. Otherwise it has a good read on the game. Otherwise she just can't stop leaking information. Yeah. And so, what happens here is just the first the first half of the strategic scramble what <laughs> before the fake out mm -hmm. is just nuttiness yeah. so what happens everybody is like okay this is easy we're just gonna vote out i'm trying to, who is the original plan is it jackson and lucy or jackson and jesse that's the original plan i th think jackson and lucy were the first i think names? so too yeah because I think everybody else is saying, okay, we're fine. Like you have the Bailey, Bree, Jess corridor of people are like, okay. And then Nick and Sarah. Mm -hmm. Cooper right, because the girls wouldn't have wanted to cut Jesse at that point. In no, early, exactly. The girls, the secret girls alliance. Yes. And so yeah, it it's kind of like, okay, this is easy. Mm -hmm. And maybe like if this were like a live game where you have like a half hour, that's right. what would have happened. Yeah. But there's no way, mm -mm. A, with the amount of time these people have, mm -hmm. and B, coming back from fall break, right. everybody's amped up, they're geared up, <laughs> there's no way this happens. So it's just a matter of time. And what they start to come for Sarah, yeah. not realizing that Sarah is better connected than people are giving her credit for. Right. As usual, Sarah... Right has more irons in the fire than people know. Yeah. And so what happens is it sets off this crazy chain of events where now who's getting votes, who's not getting votes, who do we want to go to? Is everybody voting where they say they're going to go? Now all of a sudden Andrew is saying, well, it doesn't benefit me if Jackson goes home. Mm -hmm. Because Andrew, who has a great episode by the way, yeah, is seeing maybe we merge, but maybe we don't. And if Jackson and Lucy go home, mm -hmm. that leaves Andrew alone with Leia and Jesse on a tribe. Right. I think, yeah, it's interesting how many people are like, oh, we're definitely merging after this. You can't ever assume that. Ever. No. Was anyone thinking that they would swap at 15 and then do a double tribal where two people go home with the highest amount of votes? Like, no. Right. So, like, you cannot be short-sighted in these games and assume anything so I think Andrew's point, like you just made, it makes total sense. Like, if we don't and my tribe loses, I'm gone. So yes. I think, yeah, like, I mean, so many chains of events are already happening. I think I think I texted you at one point. I was like, if Sarah finds out her name is out there, you know a plan is going to be hatched. And yep. we see that because Bailey tells Nick who tells Sarah, <laughs> or however that yeah. happened. So totally. like, you know, I think... So yeah, just a lot of, I think it's, it's interesting to seeing the people whose names are out there besides Jesse, we didn't really get a ton from Jesse. So I'm a little bit nervous for her. Yeah. Um, but I think with like Jackson finding out his name was out there, Sarah, like plans are in motion to, to help combat that, which is good. Yes. Um, and then of course, once the information gets to Sam, you know he's going to sprinkle his magic dust can't help himself. on the vote and try to get it to go how he wants. So it's like that just adds a whole layer, you know, with Adam's idol and giving, you know, wanting to give that to Lucy. So, uh, yeah, ooh, this is so, much. so interesting. Yeah. So we have this pre tribal, pre flashback strategy mm -hmm. session. Where it looks like, okay, we have this, like, is it going to be Jackson and Lucy? Is it going to be Jackson and Jesse? Is it going to be Lucy and Jesse? Is it going to be Sarah? And I think I think Lucy and Jesse is kind of the Jackson, Andrew, Sarah, Nick 
version of the plan, I think, at one point. Um, <laughs> but part of it is it all depends on who votes for who in this split. Yeah. Which is hilarious because <laughs> it's so like, it's not even like 4D chess. It's like 5D chess mm -hmm. of like everyone has to sit in the exact right spots for this to work. And like, it's so, it's almost like the genius like of like they do these elaborate plans on the genius where it's like, okay, if you sit here, tap me on the elbow and then I'll be the elephant in this game. And it's like, okay, what <laughs> but like they're bringing this into Survivor and it's this layers and layers and layers and layers of stuff that happens. Um, yeah. I do on the funny side of things, I do want to note that Jackson is saved and Andrew's phone is Jackson Survivor, which is very funny. Um, <laughs> and then... Um, I don't know if this happens before or after this, but I do want to, I want to get into it now. This conversation of bears and flies. Yeah. Uh, there are bears in this game and they have flies around them. I find this to be a very interesting way to look at the game. Yeah. Because I think that it, it has so much to do with perception versus reality. Yes. But in survivor perception really becomes everything because mm -hmm. Like we talked about with Lucy last week, Lucy is playing a 10 times better game than she played last time, a hundred times better game. But if she still tries to play this under the radar puppet master game, she's not going to get the votes at tribal council again. She's going right. to get there and right. lose again. Yeah. And so while Lucy isn't a fly person mm -hmm. with the way she's been playing this game, if she's perceived as a fly to add or to Sam's game, then she is because right. it's how she's perceived. Right. Adam is even worse than that because we know how hard Adam's been playing. Yeah. We know how good he's been playing. But if everybody else in the game sees him as Adam or as Sam's sidekick, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think, point. and I think Andrew is the perfect person to be having this discussion with because Andrew is Cooper's sidekick, right? Mm -hmm. That's how everybody sees him. And so I like the fact that he's thinking this, but it goes back to a discussion we had about Kevin two weeks ago of Kevin sees himself as the main character of his game, right. whether he is the main character survivor or not, <laughs> or whatever Kevin sees himself as the main character and it dictates the way he plays in my opinion for the better mm -hmm. who in this game, I think from this fly division of people need to start seeing themselves as the main character. I think Ooh, I like Andrew, it. you have the list of the flies. I don't have the list of the bears okay. and flies because this episode was so bananas. Yeah. Like literally like it's like trying to be like a court stenographer taking notes for this episode. <laughs> oh Cause like stuff just keeps happening and you're this like, oh why God, I was like, so I bad at taking notes in college. I just like gave up on it. Cause I was like, I, yeah, I gave up halfway through the episode. And then imagine your lecture flashes back. Like, okay, now we're going back to minute 15 <laughs> exactly. of this lecture. We're going to redo all of it. Like there's no way. No, there's no way. Um, but I, I definitely think there are some fly people. I know Andrew mm -hmm. is one of them. Lucy is one of them <coughs> who are, and I think Sarah is also somebody who's on that list who are mm -hmm. considered these fly people. Yeah. I think Sarah does a really good job in this episode and beyond of not being a fly person. Yes. I, um, I think Sarah is more in this um not to coin another phrase from this episode, but in this hibernation state of like, mm -hmm. she's ready to make her move. It's right. been almost two weeks since Cooper screwed her. So yeah, it's been a yeah, while. Right. Um, we're hoping that it doesn't happen again at this tribal council. No. We, don't have, we don't have to reset the counter. Right. Um, but I, I think especially Andrew is somebody I want to hone in on. Yeah. What does Andrew have to do after this episode to win Survivor? I feel like he needs to be willing to play the game with a Cooper. I agree. See where he goes with that. Like if, if how are, I, I don't know how this vote is going to shake out, but like, let's say he gets through this vote. Well, his name isn't really out there. So he's going to get it through mm -hmm. this vote most likely. But um, I think he just needs to prove that he can trudge forward without cooper whether cooper goes in this next episode or not i think that's going to be his main thing he has to basically morph into his own bear never thought i'd say that ever whoa um, <laughs> episode title <laughs> but like yeah i think i mean i feel like it's it's kind of like the 
I mean, you could replace fly and bear with like player and shield, right? Mm -hmm. So if Cooper is like a shield for Andrew, but also people are, are kind of seeing it as like, oh, Cooper has Andrew, that kind of stuff. Like if you eliminate the bear, the shield, whatever, and you're able to still press forward and make it to the end and prove that you, you know, weren't just riding Cooper's coattails or whatever. And I think Andrew has the capabilities of doing that. Yeah. Um, He's shown know. himself so far this season to be a good right. player, to think right. I'm pitching that the best thing that could happen to Andrew this week is Cooper goes and Jackson stays. Mm, if there is some way yeah. to manipulate the votes, and I don't even know if this is his plan, mm -hmm. but I think if it happens, it's the absolute best because Jackson seems to be way in on the Andrew thing. Yeah. I think like Jackson and Andrew almost have like a Jackson and Kevin dynamic, but reversed mm -hmm. where like one of them is way more into it than the other one is. But like, <laughs> I think Jackson is way in on the Andrew thing. Yeah. And I think Andrew is like, okay on the Jackson thing, mm -hmm. but like, I would love that to like birth into something if they're able to both be here next week. Yeah. I like that. I think the problem is I think Andrew wants to be, I think Andrew wants to have with Cooper what Leia has with Cooper, where they have this like mm -hmm. mutually like beneficial relationship where they talk and share information, but neither one is like, I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid using the words top and bottom because it's not going to give the context <laughs> that I want to give, but like where one of them is sort of the, um, the, the bigger play, the bear and the fly. Okay. Is what we'll say. We're like, yeah. well, one of them is the bear and one of the fly. Whereas, like, Cooper and Leia are obviously both bear players. Yes. Like, yeah. you would never say either one was the other no. one's fly. Right. I right. think that's what Andrew wants to have, but doesn't. Yeah. And so I think maybe moving forward, maybe Andrew can kind of pull Bailey in a little bit more and, and do and become more of this bearish player mm -hmm. than he's been in the past. Yeah. I agree with that. So, flashback time. Um, and as we confirmed on uh, the after show, Ian is not, has not watched The Genius, which I'm stunned about because this is this has genius written all over it. <laughs> um, but so we're flashing back in time. Sam and Kevin and Adam are bored. Let's just call it what it is. The episode doesn't say it, but we're right. going to say it here on the podcast. Sam and Adam and Kevin are bored. They're missing out on the biggest tribal council of the season so far, and they just yeah. cannot help but get their grubby little fingers involved. Right. <laughs> like they just can't help it. So they hatch this plot. Where do we even start? It's crazy. Why? First, I want, I want to start here. I want to back <laughs> all the way up and start here. Okay. And go, regardless of the outcome, should they just be taking the week off here? I honestly think no. Okay. Because... You know, why let, if you are, if you have the ability to influence this tribal, why not do it and try to get your way? Okay. Right? A, you're losing two people, right? True. So if you sit back and just let any two people go, Sam doesn't want to lose Lucy, right? Like, yeah. Or Adam. So in, in that instance. So I actually think it's fine. Metal, do what you need to do. Cause some chaos. Um, because if you can get the... If you can not be voting, but still take out directly or indirectly people that you want to take out or that you're not going to work with moving forward, why not go for it? Yeah. I think the... Protecting Lu Lu protecting Lucy and targeting Cooper thing is good. Yeah. I think it's the way they should be thinking. Yeah. My, my concern with it is this has to work. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't work, you have taken a tribal council that could, put a, could have put a target on a bunch of other people and put it on yourself instead. Like, let's say all this happens, Lucy plays her idol, and then it's Jackson and Jesse that go home. Mm. Or even Jackson and Sarah. Yeah. This is so bad for Adam and Sam. Yes, especially if Cooper finds out 
that this plot was to take him out. Which she will, because somebody will tell Bailey. I know. In the battle, it'll just be off to the races. Like, yeah. honestly, we should be thanking Bailey as much as we drag her, like, for <laughs> Delia. We should be thanking her because she is the source of so much of I this, know. like, conflict this season. And she probably ends up saving Sarah in this episode, which we we, we do owe her a debt of gratitude we, yeah, for. Yeah, we do. Thank you, um, Bailey. Um, yeah, no, you're right. If you it take, has to work. Right. If you take a shot at Cooper and miss... Watch out. All hell is going to break. There's it. already people. There's already this like Cooper versus Sam thing. Yeah. If Leia finds this out that there was a plot to take Cooper, like, I feel like she's going to look at Sam differently. Um, you also, if they're giving the idol to Lucy, they now have no protection. Yes. In that instance either. So you're right. Like, I think Cooper going here as much as we would not like it as a fan of Cooper's, but mm -hmm. I think it does open up the game. Yes. Which I kind of almost like want to see just to see how that plays out in a way. Um, but yeah, you make a great point. Like if you gun for Cooper, especially at this point, if you miss there, there will be consequences. And I also feel like what's the next step here. Once Cooper goes like Sam is immediately the biggest target in the game, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. who else? I, I mean, I feel like if, if Cooper goes here, it's great for some of these like Jackson, Kevin type people mm -hmm. who people were looking at because all of a sudden now Sam is vulnerable because right. yeah, you have Lucy, but you have Lucy and Adam and there's 13 people left in the game. Yeah. Merge or no merge that even Brad Culpepper knows that math does not work, <laughs> Yeah, you know? And so that's where I'm like, is it, I don't know. But yeah. also, getting Cooper out, does that bring Leia closer to him or does that piss Leia off? I don't know. We've already heard how scary Leia can be. Yes. And Jesse has warned us that Leia is scary. I know. Does Sam have the magic charm to take out Cooper without Leia knowing? You know, if that happens, we're getting a Sam Leia meetup, right? They have to. Does he have the power to smooth things over with her and win her back? How far does his power reach? I mean, that would be the test. Yeah. If that, if he's able to pull that off, there's no limit. There's no, there's no limit to this game, to yeah. this mist that he seems to be having with all these people if he can pull this off. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember, I've watched so much Survivor in the last week, so I don't even know if it's from this season or from this, or from Survivor Michigan, but like, I feel like somebody was saying that like, if you vote out, you can like vote out someone, sorry, this is going to be very convoluted, but just bear with me. So it's like, okay. if Sam votes out Cooper, he can explain that the move was against Cooper and not against Leia. We, yeah, we talked about this with um, Bailey, actually. Okay. With Bailey and Emily B talking about the will vote. Okay, perfect. So, yes. Okay, so it is from Survivor Michigan. Okay, good. Yes. So, <laughs> so I think in that instance, it could help Sam's case. Like, look, it wasn't, I wasn't trying to weaken you, yada, yada. Like, I mean, like Leia does try to like, build this bridge but like sam could lay it out there and be like he was never gonna work with me like but does that work know. with leia can you have that conversation with leia specifically as a person with yeah. the way she views the game i don't know yeah that's my know. thing because i think there are a lot of people you could say that to and it would make sense yeah i, I don't know. know if leia is one of them i know that would be again it's like i kind of want to see it happen just to see what would happen I there i know but it's crazy like and she wouldn't didn't I don't know where I'm getting all these memories from. <laughs> Did didn't she say at one point or somebody say like if like a friend or a close ally is taken out without me actually having to do mm -hmm. it? Yes, like, that is Leia was, saying it. It was Leia. Okay, good. Wow, my memory is actually not as bad as I, I thought. So um so in a way, and Leia, it's not like Cooper is Leia's only alliance. Like, yes, they have a great friendship and they're allies, but like she does have 
other people. She's in a better spot with him gone. Yeah. So it like I think if if that happens and Sam can kind of explain it and Leia can kind of like take the friendship situation out of it, like it's not a bad thing for her game. So I don't. Uh, it's know. not a bad thing for her game, but that's a big ask. Yeah. Given what we know about Leia, is can she say no? I like it's not a friend thing. It's right. just I don't know. But yeah. we'll find out. We might get to find out. So that would be exciting. Right. Um, so returning to this plan of insanity. So mm-hmm. this plan that begins as Adam gives Lucy his idol, which I like. Yes. Devolves into <laughs> Kevin gives Jackson an idol. Adam gives Lucy an idol. They all vote for Cooper and let the chips fall where they may on the other vote. And this is where just all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Because if it's just Adam gives the idol to Lucy, they try and rally the votes for Cooper. Maybe they get him, maybe they don't. It's fine. Once you start, even when we thought this was a real idol, Mm -hmm. once you start incorporating this in, then we're just off to the races. I know. And so then it becomes, okay, so Jackson and Lucy are for sure voting for Cooper. Sarah and Nick might be voting for Cooper, but they have to do it in a way that protects Sarah, depending on where the votes go. Mm -hmm. Um, Andrew is probably not in on this vote. Maybe we can get Andrew to vote for Jesse instead of Sarah or fudge these numbers. So the votes are on Jackson and Jesse and Jackson and Lucy play the idols, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then (laughs) we find out that Jackson's idol is fake. It because it's this thing that was in Adam's room when I Megan know. was there. And it's like our first real moment with Adam where we're like, no, like this I is know. like, he had all that stuff with the fake idols, but we were very much like, how would Adam possibly know this was a fake idol? Right. But like, this is not good. No, I, I was going to say like, that's like the one ding I have against Adam in this episode. Like he was, he was doing so well, but it was like, why would you leave a fake idol out in your room and have another player come in. Like that was just a big flub, huge flub. And so now Jackson knows his idol is fake. Mm -hmm. So I doubt Jackson votes for Cooper here. Right. But he also knows that Lucy has an idol. So now Jackson has to figure out, how to basically make it Sarah and Jesse. So Jackson is Ugh. almost backed into a corner of having to vote for Sarah, maybe. Mm. I don't know because I don't see how he can vote for Cooper after this. Right. Because then the votes are on him and Jackson and Cooper go home, which would. Yeah, that would be that crazy. Would be not great. Um, but like, I Ugh. yeah, it's so much. I know it was like almost perfect, and then it just went down the drain really fast. So we have basically five people who may or may not be getting votes here, and that's right. Jackson, Sarah, Jesse, Cooper, and Lucy. Mm-hmm. Lucy has a real idol, or so we've been told. Yeah, right. I, know. I am very oh. gun shy on believing anyone has yeah, idols. We can't or not idols. say right. We can't say for sure. So Lucy has an idol. Mm -hmm. Andrew may have an idol, which is something we haven't discussed Uh, yet. yet. And the episode doesn't really bring up. Andrew may or may not have an idol here. No. Um, I feel like at this double tribal situation, if Lucy stands up and plays an idol and you know Lucy got votes, I don't care whether I think it's fake or not. Uh, obviously you know me you know I, i'll play anything as an idol i don't give a shit <laughs> but like i yeah. feel like if andrew's got that thing with him maybe we find out next week whether andrew's idol is fake whether know. andrew or emily b have that idol yeah you gotta you gotta play you gotta it. play it but he we don't get any sort of confessional from him talking about it right never which is so weird yeah um also Adam wants Lucy to flash this idol before the votes. Thank you for bringing that up. I can not stand that plan in any iteration of Survivor. 
It only makes sense if Jackson flashes the idol before vote because Jackson's is fake. The Good. only way it works is if you do what Aliza and Devin do yes. in season yeah. three. That, is the only right. way that the yeah. idol flash works is if one of them is fake. Mm-hmm. But you don't flash a real idol at tribal like you because that that just screws over your plan. If your plan is to try and get people to vote for the person who has the idol, which you should. Right. The only other option is, and I was thinking about this today, and this would be if Ad- if Sam and Kevin pull this off, if Lucy flashes the idol and plays it on Jackson. Oh, gosh. I don't... I, that would be nuts. That would be nuts. It would be... We would need a separate well, podcast for that <laughs> moment. Um, well, I mean, and I was going to say, too, like, doesn't... Are, people are... Because I was even thinking now, like, doesn't... Don't most people know now that Lucy is probably going to get this idol? So, like... I think people have theorized that that is probably what will happen. So, like, she might not even get a lot of votes here. By the time we get to this tribe, like, we know how information spreads in this game. Like, it, like, it, I I don't know. So, like, your, your theory of her using it on someone else could make sense if, like, people are just not even voting for her because she has the idol. I just don't see, like, I don't see any of the people who are in trouble voting for Lucy. I don't think so either. And the people who are in trouble are half this tribe. Right. (laughs) So I could see Lucy playing an idol and not even needing it. That would suck. I would hate to see her waste an idol here. Okay. So before we get into a meta discussion of this episode, first (laughs) of all, gun to your head, who do you think are the two people going home this week? My thoughts haven't changed since last week. So I think it's going to be Cooper and Jesse. Okay. <sighs> what about you? My thoughts have changed since last week several okay. times. Um, I think Cooper and Jesse narrative wise might be the best case scenario as much as I love Cooper mm-hmm. to death. Um, I think like you said earlier, Cooper going opens up the game in so many different ways. Yeah. I am worried that it is going to be Cooper and Sarah going out together here. Mm. Um, twin fates yeah. aligned since the beginning. Ugh. Because the thing is, like, who are Bailey, Bree, and Jesse voting for? I don't feel like it's Jackson here. And I yeah. don't feel like it's Cooper because Bailey likes Cooper, I think. Yeah. Well, there was a point in the episode where Nick, I think, was deciding whether or not to tell. Was it Bailey? I don't about know about the Cooper I plan. Remember. I wish I would have taken. I have seventeen notes. pages of notes, but I, I don't know half of it's I, illegible. I think that was so past fast. the point where I stopped taking notes. But um, was that it? Anyway. Um, I guess I could see them still voting for, for Jackson, right? I don't remember when they were trying, when Bailey was trying to divide the room. I mean, I know that was kind of like earlier on. Yes. I feel like some of them were maybe voting Jackson or Lucy. I don't know. This is, there's so many ways this could go. Yeah. I don't know. I'm excited to find out finally. Yeah. So I have a theory about this episode. Okay. And it circles around Ian. Perfect. Um, so um, there are, I'm going to talk about College Survivor kind of as a meta narrative here, like as College Survivor as an entity. So we have the first era of College Survivor, and that's Maryland. Mm-hmm. And so during that, we also get um, time and change happens during that. The early seasons of Boston, I believe, are also having that. Maybe season one of Syracuse is also happening during that. We have that which culminates with Maryland All-Stars, mm-hmm. right? And Maryland All-Stars proves that College Survivor can be as good or better than CBS Survivor. Yes. Like, okay. that's what Maryland All-Stars teaches us. It's the pinnacle of that. Mm-hmm. So now we're into Generation 2, which is Survivor Michigan is the head of Generation 2. We have Maryland New Beginnings. 
We have um, also uh, Liberty CNU, um, all these other that are popping up all over. Um, even things like San Diego are mm-hmm. happening, different things. Yeah. And so now we have Michigan All-Stars. I think this episode in particular is the culmination of the second generation of College Survivor because what it teaches us is that College Survivor isn't Survivor. Mm-hmm. And it can be something totally different as a television show mm-hmm. than CBS Survivor. Even though it's the same game, that what you can do inside College Survivor is make a show that is totally different than what you can do on CBS. Yes. So we've seen it all season long with, we have these little flashback moments. We have Shannon showing up. We mm-hmm. have um, Sarah in the Magic School Bus. We have Professor Nick. We have mm-hmm. all these little spinoff shows that are happening. We have all of this happening. And it culminates with an episode of Survivor that doesn't have a tribal council. The cardinal mm-hmm. sin of Survivor, <laughs> right? That's so yeah. much that like I was freaking out. The comment section was freaking out. Mm-hmm. People were going nuts on social media. But like I realized the reason why is because I'm thinking about this as a season of Survivor, right? which it's not. This is a television show. Yeah. And Survivor Michigan is a totally different television show than CBS Survivor. Mm-hmm. And that's what Ian, particularly with his background, yes. with the way he views the show, with the way he views all of this, has done to College Survivor, is mm-hmm. now he has said there are no rules. Right. You don't have to structure your episode any way. You can have flashbacks. Mm-hmm. You can do you can have an unreliable narrator. You can do an episode <laughs> without a tribal council. Like it does not matter like, yeah. what you do here. And I think that this is the culmination of generation two of College Survivor is to say College Survivor as a television show, it's not just good survivor anymore. Mm-hmm. Now it's totally outside of that box and has become something totally different. So I will not be surprised in the next couple of years to see 75% of college survivor edited like this, mm. like put together, like we've seen Michigan all-stars put together with fun little asides and quirky music and episodes that are structured at different paces and all of this stuff. Because I think now what you have is survivor Michigan. That is interesting for reasons outside of the survivor. Yes. Right. Like even if you weren't somebody like us who was a survivor obsessive, Mm -hmm. who like the reason Maryland all-stars works is because it's one of the best survivor games ever played. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting survivor games ever played. Yeah. But if you didn't know shit about survivor or you didn't really care that much about survivor, you could watch survivor Michigan and love it and think Mm -hmm. it was hilarious and think these people were so funny and think Sarah and her magnets was so funny and Adam and his grandma was so good and this scavenger hunt and all this stuff that we see and crazy will running around the lab and blowing up pictures (laughs) of like you could watch this as a non-survivor fan and Mm -hmm. love it and I think that's the genius of Ian and I think Mm -hmm. that's why he's now kind of the second generation of college survivor and now we're we're starting something new, which is College Survivor as a new entity. And I'm excited. Wow. Paul, that, wow. I laid awake. So, night, Joe, I laid awake. <laughs> it's funny. I have Ian Defender for people that are just listening. I have Ian Defender in my yes. like title card. I need to push that over to Paul. Well, because you were defending him from me. I was <laughs> Ian Slender. <laughs> But I, like, it's so funny. I was going to, I was not going to come anywhere close to anything that you just said, but th- that was beautiful. Like I'm going to give like you that. a standing ovation because I am actually standing up, but um, I think, yeah, I think just even on top of that, it's like, you know, I mean, Ian started editing at season two. Right. Mm-hmm. So like the, and especially because of like the year difference, like they knew things that were coming up. Like I'm sure he, he was editing, older seasons, like while all stars was happening. Yeah. And he's Mm -hmm. talked about this in different things. So it's like, I think it's also just like the, it's like how much care, not only him, but like everyone that's involved with survivor Michigan, like they put a lot into this. Like they, you know, Ian was like, they were crafting storylines for people through multiple seasons leading up to this. Like, I think for me, it was like, and that's where I was kind of looking at it with this like to be continued episode of like, Oh my people like, how dare you? But it's like, 
A, we got so much content in that episode. I, I mean, I think that was one of the best episodes of like a college survivor ever. And I'm not just saying that because we're doing this podcast for Survivor Michigan. Like I would be, Paul and I would be saying this stuff to each other outside of the we realm do. of doing this. We do. You should read right. our text threads, which yeah, we will exactly. never leak. But like, this is what we do all the time. We right. just have a podcast for this show. Yeah. So it's like, I. so I think the reason why I was, another reason why I was fine with it to be continued is like, We've not really, besides maybe um, Maryland, like, and not to discount other college survivors, but like, have we seen any other franchise put this much into their like series? Like, I think the answer is no. So it's like, that's why I was so easily able to like forgive Ian. Like, okay, so you have to wait a week to see what the tribal council is like. So I think you bring up a whole other like extra branch of that whole thing and you said it beautifully. So it's just like, I don't know. And also like, I think also because we're such like big survivor fans, but it goes beyond just the CBS show. Like I like to see so many different people like coming together and caring about this game, whether it's on an Island online, a three day game, a 100 day game, whatever. So I think it's just like, I mean, I don't know. So I, yeah, you said it best. I'm just going to throw my little two cents onto that, but. No, I think you're exactly right. Because I think what we've seen, like there has been like, like a time and change has had a couple really great seasons. Same Mm -hmm. with Boston. Mm -hmm. Um, Syracuse is another one, but like what we've seen from them is good survivor, which we love good survivor. Like I in no way mean to like diminish that. I love good survivor. I'll watch good. I watch anybody play good survivor. Yeah. But this is different. This is good TV. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the difference is like, it is like, like I joked and called him Christopher Nolan on the, <laughs> the recap show. But honestly, yeah. think about it. Think about seeing Nate in three different seasons now. Like all of the iterations of that. Think of some of these through lines of Sarah's story going all the way back. Mm-hmm. And, and some of and these things that we're seeing you know, these these people that have played these seasons together and the way that's evolved, the evolution of Jackson and Megan mm-hmm. from season four till now. Like, right. this is a TV show and it's being made by a person who understands how to make a TV show and right. make a right. film in such a brilliant way. Yeah. And again, it's it would never be to dis- diminish any of the other survivors no. that we love to watch and enjoy. What it is, is to like give flowers to the commitment level mm-hmm. and to the g ge- i mean i keep using the word genius and i feel like people feel like that's hyperbole when i say it but like i mean it when i say it like i yeah. mean it in the way that like as an innovator you look at this and see what it could be right and like we're again six episodes in dude we're not even like this ride hasn't even really begun yet i know and i'm so before yeah. we got into the power rankings of it, I just wanted to say <laughs> I'm too pumped yeah, for what the rest same. of the season is. I've come a full 180. I've like gone to personal therapy about why I was so upset about this episode and come out <laughs> on the other side like with a heart full of love. So yeah. like it was valuable. Um, and I'm really, really, really excited. Yeah, I am too. That was that was very well put. And if you're still mad at Ian by this point, and you're probably like so if you've canceled us by now because of what we've just talked about, I like know. you're missing out. I mean, here's the thing too, like, and I've probably said this, I think I probably said this to Paul, but like, I'll say it on here. I don't care. Like, you know, Survivor Maryland is, was like always, like you always remember your first, right? Like yes. I will always remember. I mean, I think I got into it. They were like halfway through all Star, So I literally like okay. binged everything to catch up, to jump into it. But like, if I had to choose one to present to someone to get into College Survivor who have never been into it before, it's going to be Michigan. So I can't make that statement yet. <laughs> I said before, okay, so part, so my background is I got into Survivor Maryland right as um, Guts and Glory was finishing. Okay. So like I'm... So, and it was also during a very weird time in my life. So it was kind of where like, 
I was like having a rough time and sort of filled this personal void with Survivor Maryland. Mm -hmm. uh, got into it, like binged everything. And like right as soon as I finished Guts and Glory was when they made the All-Stars announcement. Wow. So like I waited the entire like off season. <clears throat> like, and it was a long ass time waiting for All-Stars. And I have always said that Maryland All-Stars is my favorite season of Survivor across all franchises because nothing compares to the anticipation that I felt, mm. the interaction having with people while watching it, and just the experience of it being absolute glued to my television, appointment viewing, like, don't talk to me, don't text me, don't call <laughs> me, don't try to make plans with me, like, I'm watching this as it premieres every week. I have also said that depending on how this season turns out, it will determine where those fit as mm. one and two in my rankings. Yeah. And so we're six episodes in. Michigan All-Stars is on track to be right there for me in that spot. We'll see. Yeah. I, I It's so exciting. Yeah, it really is. I can't wait to see your thoughts after. And maybe my thoughts will change. I don't know. But... I'm saying this now at episode six of All Stars. So yes, I I will have a post mortem, obviously. Mm -hmm. But also, I think part of the experience is this, like doing the podcast and like I was right, doing the right. blogs during Maryland All Stars and like the experience of interacting with the cast and like mm -hmm. obviously we know people on this cast. Yeah, there's people we don't know that we've interacted with several times that we've talked to that we've heard feedback from, and so there is that specialness to me. Yeah, of like. These are our, like, these are our people. Like these are right, like, right. you know, like Sam is playing Survivor Michigan. Like it's so fun. Like, yeah. you know, like Sam was in our text thread this week, whether he yeah. wanted to be or not, he was held <laughs> hostage in our text thread because sometimes our text thread is like, just like who's hot on screen. And so like, I tried to like, cause I, I tried to text Joe those thoughts in private, just him and I, and then I couldn't. Um, and so Sam, like I said, Sam got to know the power rankings guys on a totally different level this week. Yeah. <laughs> um, thankfully, there was like limited amounts of survivor nudity this week. Um, not none because never none, but mm. limited amounts this week as compared to previous episodes because, um, yeah, we might have gotten canceled. <laughs> So all that to say, all that to say, we are the power rankings guys. So I yes. threw my pen at some point during that model. Oh. I don't know where it went. So That's hold on, okay. stay with me here. <laughs> I gotta find it. It's oh, here it is. Perfect. All right, let's get the power <laughs> ranking. The circle of power. The circle of power. Yes. All right. Um. All right. Do you want me to go first? I do. Okay. I do have my list here. Uh, it's got to be Adam. He's on the circle of power. I know yes. we've talked about him before, but he put so much into, into the challenge. Um, the only one to get the tattoo, the real tattoo, the only one to shave his head. Um, he's just been playing so well this entire season. He had the little flub with the fake idol thing. Mm -hmm. We have to mention that again, but I think he's just like, he's in it to win it. He's in it. You know, he's, he's, back and playing like this is what we wanted to see this is what you want to see for a returning player we can't say enough good things about him so circle of power that was an easy one circle of power absolutely all right who's next um i put sarah yes okay because i think some people knowing that their name is out there could take things in one direction. But I think when mm -hmm. Sarah finds out it's her name, you know, she's going to like go full steam ahead with some wild plans to get herself out of it. So it's interesting that it is a to be continued episode because we don't know who goes home. Right. Yes. Had we seen tribals maybe, or the tribal, maybe the list would be different depending on that. But um, I think she's the perfect person to try to turn a vote around. She presented that plan um you know we hope it works out but um yeah i think she has the power in the game to make this happen i think her connection with nick definitely mm -hmm. helps so i was happy to put her in yeah, the there's power. no panic in sarah's game at all when she finds yeah. out her name is out there and i think that yeah. makes a huge difference that's a great call out. um and that's not to say sarah may still go home this week but if she does it's like at the hand of this extremely wonky twist mm -hmm. 
and like this we like not just double tribal but double tribal and idols and fake idols and all of like if she goes out it's kind of in this sari way where like you can get voted out and still be on the power rankings list because mm. like you still played well and right. it was just you were just a victim of circumstances so i fully agree with sarah being there regardless of result perfect all right next i put nick yes i think he it's funny i wanted to i don't think i put anyone on my list I think anybody who was like a information leaker, I kept off the list. Okay. But the reason why I did that is because I wanted to speak to who they were le leaking the information to. Yes. And I think that Nick is one of those people. Bailey obviously is telling him, tells him about the Sarah mm -hmm. situation that sets off the whole thing. And I also like that we see Nick fighting for his allies. Yes. Like he puts his foot down and says, no, I'm not comfortable with voting out Sarah let's move on to a different plan. So we love to see that. It makes sense, especially in this crazy tribal. Is there a merge next? Is there not? It's coming up. No one's going to want to let go of their allies. So yes. I like that he put his foot down for Sarah. And I think he's in a good spot. He's getting information from different sides of the game. Um, I think and, what you uh, said is a really good point we didn't cover, which I think if Nick tells Bailey don't vote for Sarah, I don't think Bailey votes for Sarah. Right. Yeah. Like I, I think if Nick says we're not doing that, I think they're not doing that. Mm. And I, in in this kind of situation where one vote will probably tip the entire balance of the game, like that'll make all the difference. Mm -hmm. So good on Nick. I agree. Who else do we have? I put Sam again. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what are you going to say? Like, once he got involved, it's like, I, I don't know. It's, it's almost like muscle memory at this point. Like, I think there's going to be a time that he's off the, off the, the circle of power. Um, but it's like, if you, if you give Sam information, especially in this situation, like he's going to try to push his agenda into the game as much as he can. So, um, you know, with him and Adam giving Lucy the idol and all that, you know, uh, even though it might be short-sighted if it doesn't work, but with him trying to target Cooper, I think could be a good idea depending on the aftermath of that. So yeah, I had to throw him on the list today. I agree. I think there is a moment late in the episode after Sam's hit list has grown to like the entire cast <laughs> where he is saying like, maybe I should be reprite. Maybe Cooper should be higher on the list and maybe mm. I should be focusing less on these people and more on these other people. And like, I it, again, it's good from Sam. I still want to see some sort of repair of this Sam and Megan relationship. Yeah. Because I think that it's an emotional decision from him to not okay. want to. And maybe, maybe after Jackson is gone, we will see that. And maybe, may, maybe Sam good is point. able to do that after Jackson mm -hmm. is gone. And that's what he's waiting for. But I just don't feel like there's a real reason for Sam to not want to work with Megan mm -hmm. that's not emotional. So I, yeah. I want to see that from Sam. And maybe if Jackson goes this week, that's what we will see from Sam. Mm -hmm. But um, again, Sam is great. He's played just an outrageously good game of Survivor yeah. so far. He's amazing. He's the moment. He is the... My phone is blowing up right now. Um, <laughs> he is the moment. He is amazing. So yes yeah. to Sam. All right. Who else? The last one I put was Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that. I don't even fully know why. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, he he is able to like they clock this fake idol together. Yes. He's I, able I, to work well with Andrew. Like, yeah, like I, I get think it. of the people. Like, I I actually did have Lucy on the list at one point, but I did take her off. Oh. No fault to her <laughs> specifically, and like obviously it's good for her social game to get the idol. Yes, uh, but I think what I I wanted to highlight like Sarah and Jackson specifically because again I think I said it earlier like the people who know that their names are out there it's like what are they doing to try to not make it be them so i think yeah. that's why i put jackson on there for that reason is like yeah maybe jackson like three or four weeks ago wouldn't have put in this much effort to try to save himself but like he is trying which is good um like you said him, he and megan clock this fake idol um he gives kevin the fake vote steal or whatever sure. which i thought was funny very funny um so i don't know i think 
I feel like we might lose potentially one of these people. So yeah. I was, I'm like, maybe I'll just throw Jackson on there in case he gets voted out next episode. Too. Yeah, I'm <laughs> very worried about Jackson. I was just having a conversation this week about how I'm very worried about Jackson. I mean, losing Jackson here would suck because I love the way Jackson plays Survivor Michigan. I just love mm -hmm. his craftiness and like his just willingness to just kind of do whatever. Um, but if we lose him here, depending on how the story goes, I'm semi okay with it. Yeah. I love Jackson and Megan. Like that's what mm -hmm. would crush me the most is I want to see more Jackson and Megan. Yeah. So losing Jackson and robbing us of Jackson and Megan content, I would be angry with these people. But again, with 10 voters, <clears throat> all these votes, somebody's going to go home with three votes, could be two votes, could be one vote, depending yeah. on how these idols go. Um, it's going to be heartbreaking no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. um, are we potentially in for seeing three boots next episode? I was just going to say that. like, We're going to have a lot to process. I know. Um, and there's going to be a lot more room on the cir circle of power if three people go because <laughs> yes. we're really getting down to it at this point. We're getting down to it. Should we call whether it, we merge or not? I was literally just going to ask you the exact same question. Merge or no merge? I say merge. We'd be at 13, right? Yeah, we'd be at 13. I'm going to plant my flag at merge. I know it's kind of the vanilla place to plant your flag, but I'm going to say merge. What do you say? I think our dreams of a comeback challenge are probably crushed at this point. Right? Hard to imagine. And I'm not giving it up until after the merge. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put maybe like 1% on that. Yes. I'll just be different and say... Well, it wouldn't make sense to do another swap because it would be. Let's do this. This will probably never happen. They do a swap. Six and six. The person who doesn't get picked automatically goes to merge. Okay. I love it. I'm just going to throw that Could out be. there. Take Why that not? idea into a future season if that's yeah, not. No uh, kidding. If that's, <laughs> that's not what happens, but I'll just shake it up and throw something crazy out there. If it doesn't fit, double it and pass it on to the next person. Like, <laughs> whatever, it's all good. I love that. I'm excited. We say that at the end of every episode, and yeah. it's been true at the end of every episode. I'm excited for what tomorrow brings. I know. I'm excited I, for what's next. I do like that when we do do these on Tuesday, we only have like less than 24 <laughs> hours to, to go for the next episode. Um, I will say too, halfway through the episode, I gave up on my notes. Yes. So I wanted to read something. Yes. Um, at the end of, I think the live recap, I think Ian had said like, oh, wouldn't it be crazy if somebody figured out an acronym for forced hibernation? And I'm here sure. to say, I'm very proud of it. I've done it. Yes. I... Now you get the standing ovation. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So I will read it out loud. Please let me know what your thoughts are, everybody. But um I don't know how I did this while I was also watching the episode too, which is also yes. crazy, but okay. So I'm just going to read it. So it was forced operation forced hibernation. So this is what I came up with. All right. Foes organizing risky chaos every day. Havoc is bringing everyone restless, restlessness nightly at tribal inflicting obvious nightmares. It's amazing. It's poetry. It's amazing. I'm, it, Maybe I should auction that off and sell I, it. I don't, have a, I don't have enough good things to say about it, Joe. <laughs> when you texted it to me the other day, I was in awe of your ability. I'm so impressed. It was crazy. Yeah. It was fun to do, actually. So I love it. Yeah. Tweet that tomorrow. I was like, quote, tweet the when, they, <laughs> when this gets posted. Quote, tweet that so people know and people can find you. Yes. It's amazing. Cool. I love it. That was I'm my so excited. Homework. But yes, we're very excited for the episode. We're going to mourn potentially three people. So I might have to have my tissues ready for that. Yeah. Um, and there's nobody we want to lose at this point. No. So it's all gut wrenching at this point. Yeah. Um, so we'll just see. One other thing we didn't mention real Please. quick. Cooper has this phantom vote. Yes. Why have we not gotten any talk of it? I think my understanding of the phantom vote is that you have to use it at like a tribal you're not at. Oh, yeah, but the question I never got answered is, 
can, is it transferable? So can he give it to somebody? Mm. I don't think there's anybody on this safe tribe he could give it to. Maybe Emily B, but I don't even think he would. They have any kind of relationship. So yeah. can he give it to somebody and then have them use it on his behalf? Right. But I don't know that Cooper's ever been in really the right situation to use it. That's fair. Yeah. Maybe we'll have to go. I'll go back and when did he get that? Like episode two. Yes. Is that when Sam took off his pants? <laughs> was when Cooper got the Phantom vote? Possibly. Was that the fountain situation? I think it was the Everybody fountain was situation. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's, yeah. Is that episode three? Maybe. I don't Two know. I'll have to go back yeah. to my notes. We could also just text Sam. Maybe he can explain it to us. But... We could easily just text somebody and find <laughs> this out instead of just opining <clears throat> on the podcast. But I just think it's interesting that it really hasn't come up yeah. since he's gotten it. So I don't know. So yeah, if he can't use it, he can't use it. But I think that could also throw a wrench in things. Like if yeah. he just votes for someone else, I mean, with how close these are going to be, he could potentially tip the scales in another direction. Yeah, so. true. Cool. All right. We've talked right. enough. <laughs> Thank you all for being here with us. As always, you can follow us on social media. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. Um generally yelling about survivor while we're doing it so uh if you enjoy that if you have any questions you want us to ask on the air if you have anything you want us to talk about if you have if you want to holler at us for being too mean to bailey you're welcome to do all of those things slide into our dms and until then we will see you next week bye everybody bye everyone bye